wireframes are sort of the uh, stock and trade for um, or have been for many uh, information architects and user experience practitioners and you know I've done a number of wireframes in my past and uh, we you know still definitely have folks here who use wireframes as as a key tool but I am firmly convinced that wireframes will become less and less um, the only or the main tool that user experience or, inf or um, information architects use as digital experiences become more dynamic, mm -hmm. as they become more integrated across different devices, you know, iPads and mobile and websites yeah. and you know, your TV and then, and then throwing in, you know, for REI, brick and mortar in store experience, a wireframe cannot describe uh, the customer experience that you're trying to design in all of those places. Hmm. So you can do wireframes for the website, um, and even those are getting harder and harder to do uh, when you're talking about responsive uh, web design or, or you know, a lot of really um, dynamic, relevant content. You can do wireframes for a mobile site, but I think what is going to become increasingly important for information architects is this ability to map out the experience and the information needs across all of these different channels and devices. Interesting. And so what sort of tools would you use if it's not a wireframe to do that? Well, and I think that's a great question because what's so exciting for me right now in the field of information architecture is I don't think we've got that entirely figured out yet. And so there's huge opportunity for, uh, particularly for new people who are entering the field and who aren't maybe jaded by, oh, what I do is wireframes, uh -huh. to come up with new tools. Um, you know, there's a there's a, a discipline called service design that's starting to grow here in the United States. It's really looking at how do you design services across uh -huh. um, digital and into physical, and they have a lot of tools that we can borrow from. They have things like customer journey maps and touch point matrices and, 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 and I think really great models that we can start from that start to show us how to map and show the path across these different channels and devices. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where I think we need to go and I think there's a huge opportunity for us to come up with these things. Mm -hmm. I just did a workshop with Peter Morville and, and and uh, he has some great, um, if you go to SlideShare and, and look at his presentations, he has some great thoughts as well as, as where information architects need to go in order to serve this, you know, coming um, and already here, I think, need to provide maps and wayfinding and directions for right. people across all of these different experiences. Very interesting. So it sounds like a call to, a call to action for the next generation of information architects. It is. It's it also sounds, my... Samantha, like your book. Where's your book on all of this? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm actually talking to a couple of publishers right now. I can imagine it'll be a really great one when it comes out. I'm really looking <laughs> forward you. to it.